Vauxhall's latest and all new SUV, the Grandland X. Now the Grandland is gonna sit at the top of Vauxhall's SUV range above the Mocha X and the Crossland X. From launch, it's available in four trim levels and with two engines, one petrol and one diesel. Now that's a 1.2 litre petrol and a 1.6 litre diesel. Both come with a six-speed manual gearbox, however, each can be selected with an optional six-speed automatic. While prices kick off at £22,310. All models get Bluetooth, DAB radio, parking sensors and lane departure warning and at least 17 inch alloys. We're testing the 1.2 litre with a 6 speed manual gearbox in Sport Nav trim. The 3 cylinder motor generates 128 brake horsepower which is enough to get it from standstill to 62 miles an hour in 10.9 seconds. It'll return around 55 miles to the gallon and emits 117 grams per kilometer of CO2. Under harder acceleration, the engine's got a nice purry growl to it, and over about two and a half thousand revs, it really takes off. It doesn't ever feel that rapid, but it doesn't leave you wanting for too much more. It's enough for real world motoring. The six speed manual gearbox is quite chunky. You certainly know it's gone into gear and it needs some precision and effort to put it in there. It clicks in, it's helped by a reasonably light clutch. Now the Grand Line X is a front wheel drive car, it doesn't have an all wheel drive option but it does have an enhanced traction control system called IntelliGrip. It has five settings including normal, sand, snow, mud and traction control off. This has reasonably good front end grip, however on a tighter corner under more acceleration you can feel a little bit of slippage. This is riding on 18 inch alloy, so you do feel the odd scarring in the road. However, it's never uncomfortable. It's just accompanied by a little bit of suspension noise. Overall, it's a nice, settled, comfortable ride. The steering setup's nicely judged. It's got a good weighting to it and feels pretty precise. This will happily take you around the town with no problem and will bob along a country road without leaving you too shaken. If you're taking it steady, the Grandland handles pretty tidily. However, if you push on and take it out of its comfort zone, it will roll more than many of its rivals that are keener to drive, like the Attacker and the Ford Cougar. At motorway speeds, there's only the slightest hint of wind noise and road noise, so it stays pretty quiet in here. The Grandland gives you that de facto SUV high up and commanding driving position so I can see over most of the hedges and have a good view down the road. Visibility to the front and side is good thanks to these thin pillars, however over the shoulder view is blocked off by the thick rear roof pillar. In here the design is very much taken from the Insignia and Astra, so it'll be very familiar to anyone who knows the latest Vauxhall range. That means it's neat and tidy and pretty easy to use. Up here you have the infotainment system and radio navigation and Bluetooth controls. It's also got some vehicle settings. Whilst this detail here is meant to be a ledge so that you can use the touch screen easier, which is quite thoughtful. In the center is dual zone climate control, which is neat and tidy, although the buttons are a little on the small side. And then this tray, which is anti-slip, perfect for your mobile phone, and has a USB connector. And then there's driver settings lower down. Getting comfortable is reasonably easy. There's a pump lever to the side. In the lowest setting, I've got very decent headroom. The steering wheel has pretty decent reach and rake and has a nice feel to it with some stereo and cruise control settings on it. The instrument dials are stylish with a computer screen in the middle. Practicality is good, there's a well-sized door bin. Whilst down by the driver's knee, there's a pull-out storage box. A couple of little trays down the middle and then under the adjustable armrest is a reasonably sized bin. Whilst this also has the optional wireless charger. The glove box isn't very usable as it's half blocked off. Let's have a look in the back. Climb into the back, the doors open nice and wide, so it's pretty easy to get in. There's a bit of a step up as these seats are tiered 
to give you a better view around. This model's got the optional rear heated seats, whilst there's a USB connector in the middle and a decent sized door bin. Space-wise, it's not too bad. I've got good leg room, although my foot room is slightly restricted under the chair ahead. However, headroom's pretty decent. In the middle, there's a fold-down armrest, while these seats split and fold 60-40 into something that's quite a flat, large load bed. Techline models and above get a powered tailgate, which opens to a boot with 514 liters of storage capacity. It has an adjustable floor and some bag hooks, whilst you can lower the rear seats from there as well. Overall, the Grandland X is a decent effort at a mid-size SUV to take on the likes of the Nissan Qashqai. It's pleasant to drive, comfortable, reasonably spacious, and attractive inside and out. Now, it doesn't do anything spectacularly well and isn't let down in any areas, so it's a good across-the-board effort from Vauxhall. Thanks for watching Driver's Seat. Do check out our website for all the latest news and reviews. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for free and let us know in the comment section below what you think of the new Grandland X.